My name is Tim Burchett. I'm a congressman in the great state of Tennessee. And Tim, we are so honored to be here at your farm amongst you and your family and my I dogs. <laughs> your dog is great. Let's go. He's but, had a day. And, and this is this is no kidding that my audience just loves you. Thank you. Brother. And uh, we love everything you're doing back there. And sometimes it's hard for us to understand really what goes on in your neck of the woods in D.C. But one of the topics that always comes up is China. And is our government compromised? Yeah, I, I think we're 100 percent compromised. I said this when that balloon started over our country. Yeah, you know, they should have dropped it um, in the Aleutian Islands. The head of the CIA under Obama and his chief of staff, Leon Panetta. I'm in Congress with his son Jimmy, who's a just an outstanding person. Not in my party, but he's an outstanding person. And Panetta's a liberal, classic liberal, but he but he's from what I understand, he's, he's a pretty straight up dude. And uh, he said we should have dropped it in the Aleutian Islands. The thing transverses the entire continental United States. It gets about halfway over. It goes Montana. Now we have missile bases that you know about and, and missile areas that we know about, if you catch my drift, it, it go in, other, in other parts of the country. It goes around. It comes down, it comes down here. I couldn't see it. I looked for it, but it was, it was a little bit west of here. It goes over um, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, military base, Oak Ridge National Laboratory down here in Oak Ridge. And then, you know, and then they shoot it down off the coast of Myrtle Beach. And then, and then uh, our president almost apologizes about it. And, you know, we allow Xi Jinping, the premier of China, to say, well, we didn't know, you know, Mike Pompeo told me, you know, we had breakfast months ago, I've been a little conservative group you spoke to, and he said, you know, Tim, they know how many paper clips you use in the Longworth building. I mean, all they do is, is analyze. And what they did, though, get this, I think the major thing they got from that, not necessarily information, because that was, they got information, but they got the response that we would have, the political response, the media's response, Washington's response, our military's response, and they've all their 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 people are analyzing every move that had that they had because they their equipment. You know, I've, I've talked about this before, but it, we our jet fighters have Chinese components in it. Now, if they were to put something, and I'm not a computer person, but say it's a virus or something, if they were to put something in there that could trigger when on the uh, the coast of, of Taiwan, if we were to go over there to defend Taiwan and it would it would de de destabilize our jets or some of our technology or things like that, they're capable of doing that. They're capable of doing that because we know it because those dadgum little, um, I always tell people, unplug your your camera on your, on your computer and close the thing even if it's unplugged because they have the capabilities of, of following even through that because of, of deep laid um, viruses and things that they, you know, it's, it's out of my pay grade, but yeah, we're completely compromised. Our financial institutions, our military institutions, our education, and our research. Tim, what did you think when Milley, General Milley, said that if he thought President Trump was going to attack China, he was going to call China? He should have been fired. He should have been fired a long time ago. That guy, he's, he's bad news in my opinion. I think he is compromised. And the Joint Chiefs issued some letter when I said that before, but I don't care. I think he's compromised. I think he's a, um, I don't know what happened to the guy. I know people that served with him, but I don't. For him to make the responses he's made, and um, I just think he's compromised, and it, it, it goes to the top levels of our government. Now, have you ever been approached by a foreign government to do something that was against the best interests of the United States. No, but it's like when I was in Nashville, the crooked lobbyists knew who the crooks were. And you know, they've got it. They've got enough people up there. I mean, they've got a guy, Pelosi wouldn't even kick a guy off. who was literally had relations with a woman who was a Chinese spy. You well, know? swallow. I'll say it. You won't. I'll say it. Swallow. <laughs> I know him. 
Um, I used to see him every morning brushing his teeth at the, at the, um, in the gym beside me. Um, you know, and you've got a U.S. senator whose driver was a Chinese spy. I mean, <laughs> Feinstein. Feinstein, Diane Feinstein, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and, and, and why is not the national media not, and, and you say anything bad about China, about you know, how they're, they're treating their people, forced organ harvesting, forced abortions. I mean, they sell organs on the open market and uh, the, how they treat the Uyghurs. You know, I know people want to beat up on Muslims, but these people ain't done nothing to me. And yet the Chinese, they imprison them. They, um, they put them in sweatshops. It's concentration camps. They, um, they're off. They're awful. My daddy fought them after the Second World War. You know, went to China to fight the communists over there. And um, he told me about the greatest regret of his life is that we turned China over to communists because we could have. And I know, my, uh, you know, Mao was a commie and, and um, 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 Chiang Kai-shek, he was, his wife was a Christian, actually. But he was, um, yeah, they talked about being a crook, but he was our crook. We wouldn't have had communism like we do now. So Chris Ray was just question. He dodged almost every question that he was asked. Every question. And... One thing that, that has really bothered me over the months and months is January 6th. He will not answer how many FBI agents were in the crowd that day. Why is that? Because, again, they're compromised. They were doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing. Here's another interesting fact on January 6th. You know the last House member was to leave the House floor? Me. I stayed. We had some folks there. We had fellows in wheelchairs. We had some ladies. They might not like this. Maybe I'm a sexist, but I was making, I want to make sure everybody got off the floor. And um, me, Mark Wayne Muller, and a couple other guys, we went out the side door. Um, I can go through the whole thing for you if you'd like, but take it 15 minutes. We'll do it over dinner. But um, I've got pictures uh, people sent me from magazines and stuff. But, um, and I called them. I called, I called the Capitol Police. I called everybody. I said, hey, I would like to talk about somebody that was in the in the tunnel doing a podcast, or, you know, broadcast. And and then I waited a couple of weeks, never got a call back. I called again, and they said, "Yeah, well, we'll 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 get on it." I ended up having to get a friend of mine who's no longer in Congress take me there and review the tapes. And I pinpointed it, and I found out who that person was. She was a member of the media. But that tells you that all the investigations, all they were after was pinning something on Trump or whatever. And there's enough blame to go around. But they did not want to. They did not want to question somebody like me that would throw doubt onto any of this because I saw it. You know, that was a lot of people could have gotten killed. That was crazy. So they, they, tell, tell me if I say anything that's incorrect. Okay. So I've heard that President Trump authorized 20,000 troops. Something to, like that. To protect the Capitol days before it happened. Sounds about right. Yeah. And then Nancy Pelosi, who's in charge of the Capitol Police. Who was filming a documentary on that day, oddly enough, with her daughter. Refused to allow the troops on the property. Is this true? That's what I heard. And I'll tell you another thing. Myself and uh, Representative Bishop, new super smart guy of the Carolinas, attorney, uh, very principled conservative guy. We were coming up the side steps that we always go up, the steps go up to the Capitol. Everybody go, you always see the, the porters and everybody camped out. And there were three lines of those um, barricades. One Capitol Hill policeman. And he said, y'all gonna have to go the other way. I said, well, I'm in Congress. Said, I'm sorry they locked it down. The vice president's here. I oh, Pence. I said, okay, we'll go back and go through the tunnel. He said, okay, and I'm sorry. One guy, and I turned to Bishop and said, that's weird. And he said, why is that? And I said, they'll have a biker rally or a pro-life rally or a rally for moms, and they'll have more security out here than this. One person on that whole side. Why would that be? <laughs> Obviously, they don't... Um, their intelligence was, you know, they just said, let's go to the Capitol. They heard them say that, and they had no one there. They did not, they didn't value my safety, I'll tell you that. Did you feel like you were in danger? 
Well, I would tell you that I probably had my own security type situation on me at the, at, during that. But if, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I felt I, I was in, I'll go through it real quick. It won't take me five minutes. Sorry, you can edit it out, whatever. Sitting on the house floor next to Congressman Buck, I got a text and it showed these people climbing the wall. I said, that's not good. And he said, what's that? I said, show him. He said, where's that? I said, outside. He said, that's not good. Guy runs in, they take Pelosi out, they're taking Scalise, take McCarthy out, everybody's out, which they're supposed to do. Which you're supposed to they have, have to get continuance of leadership, all that stuff, and they need protection. They said, they go, okay, whatever you do, don't stand up, you know, because the reason you didn't want anybody to stand up, if there was a shot fired, everything just ricochet until it gets something soft, which would be your body. And, of course, everybody did lemmings. Everybody stood up, and I got kind of tickled with that. And then um, and then I looked out, and it was kind of hazy back through there, and they popped tear gas in there. And I think our people popped tear gas, the Capitol Police or somebody on our side did, which was a bad idea because it's all on Central Area. And if it's outside, that's one thing, but... You know, that went into us. And um, and they said, hey, whatever you do, uh, uh, they started getting people out. You got to get out, get out. And then they said, um, we got locked the doors upstairs, you know, and they locked them in. What they did was they locked the people in up, up there because a lot of the Democrats and the press were up in the upper because of COVID. You know, everybody was doing that garbage. And then um, uh, I looked over there and I, um, I remembered I, I saw... Uh, I was standing in front, and they were putting a bookcase on the back thing. They just leaned it up against the door, and I thought, these guys seen too many dead gun movies. I said, hey, guys. I said, tilt it at an angle, prop it up against the back, because the, the seats in the back, you see they're elevated. They're mounted in concrete. And I said, you know, they're going to have to take the doors off the hinges to get through that, and that'll allow people to get through. And about that time, and I'm standing in front of that thing, and I heard this pop, 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 pop. It had a very distinct sound. I was thinking two, two, three, something like that round. And I was standing right in front, and I had my, I remember I had my, my jacket on, and I looked down. I mean, I got up, I go, they go, shots fired, shots fired. And I'm, and there's a picture you can see, and I've taken my car hard off, and I'm going, and you can see people with their guns drawn towards the door, and they say, um, um, and they said, uh, um, and, and I looked down, and I remember thinking, you know, hell, if they've shots fired, I'd be dead, because I was standing right in front of that glass. And what had happened was they had a, fence post they were running it through and it's popping that bomb glass they call it it's supposed to be bomb glass i don't think it is and so um but about that time they were like capitol police you gotta go you gotta go and they tried to send me out this door over here on the left and that was and the girl got shot right about then that's when she got shot and i saw a guy run on the right door a guy came us in civilian clothes and he was carrying an ar and i sat down i thought it's, this is not good. And I started thinking about what my dad told me. Dad was combat engineer, Second World War, Peleliu, Okinawa. He was the roughest of the rough. Worst. He always said, buddy, you always, when you go into a bank, you go into a football game, you go into an arena, go into somebody's house, always survey everything around you. Just, just out of habit. You don't have to be paranoid. But I'd always surveyed the, the entrances and everything. And I, when this was going down, I was watching everything going down. And I, I said, and I I thought, you know, I said, Lord, this is going to be real. And I hear my dad saying, buddy, don't panic. You keep your head. And so I got, I started moving people towards the door. And I got over here on the far door. And um, and tear gas, we'd done all this. And I remember they, they told you, don't, whatever you do, don't put the tear gas mask on. They're under your desk. Well, I pulled this thing out. Dave, and it's, and I think it had an activator on it when it picked up tear gas because mine was vibrating. And I kind of got tickled about it because I looked at some of these guys putting them on and we were helping people get them on. And I thought, you know, sure as the world when these jerks come through here, they're going to choke me out and that thing. And I'm just going to take it. I'm going to fight them. We're just going to fight. We're going to go East Tennessee right here. And I threw that and I, and I remember I threw that thing down and I laughed. I kept thinking it looked like SpongeBob SquarePants when civilians would go down in the water with SpongeBob, you know, in the old cartoon. And, um, and so I, um, I, I got, we got over here to the side, and I got some people out, and a buddy of mine was crying. And I said, I said, dude, I told him, I said, I said, you stay right here. Do not. I said, stick with me. We're going to get out of here. And, I, and then a guy was right beside me, was kneeled down, and I, thought, I leaned down, and I thought, he just got shot. 
I put my hand on him. I said, dude, you all right? And he said, no, Tim, I'm just praying. And I said, you keep praying. You stay right here, and I'll come back and get you. I will not leave. So I went over, and I got Mark Wayne. I said, buddy, we, everybody's out. Let's roll. And, uh, and so we, we ended up going out. I might have left some of it out, but that's, um, and you know, I, I, I got home that next night, and um, I remembered I, I, we, just, we just hadn't lived here very long, and it was dark. And my wife was waiting on me right there at the entranceway. And I remember it was dark. It was starting to get dark. And she grabbed me and hugged me and kissed me and told me she loved me. And then I heard Isabel upstairs say, is that dad? I mean, she came down those steps, dude. And it was just, Doosh. and I was like, man, this is, this is good. But, I, you know, and I didn't sleep very well for a while. And I, I don't I wake up in the middle of the night. Cause I remember I called my sheriff. And I said, Sheriff, I can't find my wife and daughter. I said, this, he said, you okay? And I said, yeah, I got out. We're good. We're in the office. My chief of staff, Michael Grider, he was smart. He, he had, he, he pulled all the other officers in, all these young kids. I remember one kid drank all the whiskey, all of those whiskey. I was like, well, you got any whiskey? You can pass around. I said, the kid drank half my bottle. Awesome. I said, well, he probably needed it. So getting back. Sorry. There's no, no, a lot to edit there. That was a great, that was a great segment. Sorry. Question about January 6th and the lieutenant that shot the woman. Yeah. Tim, I, have 20, I, don't, I don't think she needed to die. I have 20 years uh, of law enforcement. She's a trespasser. She should have been tased. She, I've seen the videos. Yeah, I know it's, they're going to claim it's just, and maybe it was justifiable homicide. She shouldn't have been there. She was a lawbreaker. Once anybody crossed those barriers, they were breaking the law. But I, I can't honestly sit here. I couldn't go before a court of law and t say that she deserved to die. She was a trespasser. They should have tased her, cracked her on the head. She shouldn't have been climbing through that glass. But, you know, he lit her up. I remember that. I can I can still hear that sound in my, because when she got shot, I, my proximity, I wasn't, I, I wasn't from here to that other barn to, to her. I can, I can show you that window that she went through. I got a picture of it on my phone here. It was a sad day, and I don't understand how anyone, and I've had thousands of law enforcement people contact me saying, we can't see how it's justified. And it's, it's sad that the Department of Justice wouldn't even look at it. Department of Justice is corrupt. They're not. The FBI is not the FBI my dad grew up. I have letters my granddad wrote, the director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, actually, about communists, and he wrote my granddad back, you know, and very succinct letters and, and you know about and he was concerned about the communists and what was going on in, in the world and mr hoover was as well he had his faults i know but he was uh he hit those communists strange so you just i know just recently had a we're in a skiff about the cocaine found in the white house yep first of all was it cocaine it was cocaine that was that was Tested, it was cocaine. It was not anthrax. It was not a biological entity. How That's much cocaine was it? Less than a gram. And where'd they find it? In locker number uh, 50, I believe. And oddly enough, the one behind the wall that does not have a camera pointed on it. Okay. And they don't, they didn't find the key. And what are those lockers used for? Storing things like this that you, when you go in to the White House, when I went in, to meet with President Trump in the Roosevelt Room and Vice President Pence was kind of an unusual situation. Um, I remembered I, it was during COVID even, and I went back and they gave me this 15-minute COVID. I didn't know they had a 15-minute COVID test. But 15 minutes before the president walked in, they said, Congressman, can you come this way? And I said, sure. And they go back and swab me, and, and they said, you can just wait here for a minute. And said, okay, you're good to go. And I go in and... Trump and, and Pence and everybody. And, uh, uh, you know, and there's facial identification. You know about this more than I would, but um, I know enough about it. There's, uh, there's reverse fans that sniff out if you are, and that always worries me because I'm around firearms and if maybe a gunpowder might tick it off, but of course that little congressional pen, you know, if I go through a detector, they know I'm not carrying a firearm. Um, and so, um, uh, I don't know what all it detects, but there, and, and there's a, there's a litany of things you'd go through prior to that. So my opinion had to be somebody that's on the inside. 
that somebody is that has access that would not have to go through that that type of thing and they and that bag of cocaine has has legs you cannot tell me that that's where they found that cocaine and that they do not know who did it that just to me is beyond belief so you don't think it was originally found in that locker i don't and i don't think it's the person but more than that i don't i i think that they could find out who did it your law enforcement you know there's a shooting in a anywhere they're going to lock the block down they're going to get names it's just old-fashioned footwork at that point. You start asking people, and you go back and check their stories, and check their stories, and check their stories. They, not only did they not check their stories, they destroyed the evidence. They, they claimed that they, they were afraid it was, you know, it, it's, it's clearly in a little Ziploc bag. So they tell you right off pretty much what it is. And you know that the test, they do a test, they can put something on it that's blue or whatever color it shows up. Turquoise. Okay, yeah, it's a narcotics yeah. of some sort. And... Um, but what they did was, they claimed they did was, they destroyed the container that it was in, the little plastic bag. I've seen the picture of it. It's probably not this big from what I could tell from the estimate. I've, I've, I've had my cell phone in lockers similar to that there, and the skiff that we were talking to the Secret Service was similar. Um, they said they destroyed the bag. They couldn't get enough DNA. They said enough DNA. That, that bothered me. So they got some. Well, they said enough DNA. So whatever that means. Um, and then they said, and all this was supposed to, they have you in the skiff and, you know, it's confidential. And they tell us right there, this is not confidential. This is, oh, this. And so I, I got ticked off. I just walked out. I probably shouldn't. I should have listened to the whole dog and pony show. But I realized those guys were compromised. They were being, either they were lying or they were told what to say or they were told they believed it was the truth. So who did the investigation, FBI, Secret Service? See, uh, okay, Secret Service turned it over. They said they took it to Quantico for the lab results, and that's where they destroyed the bag. Now, you're, in a law, you're a law enforcement. If you were going there, I mean, you know, I've, I've found drugs before, and I've called, I, I remember I put my foot, up, foot over it, my boot at the time. I was riding a motorcycle. I remember I was at a, little, a nice restaurant. I saw this little bag, and I said, hey, call 911. Let me talk to him. So I told him this is Tim Burchett. I said, hey, I found a bag of drugs. I said, and I don't want to pick it up. They said, good, don't. Because it could be, you know. That was prior to um, um, what we've got now coming in over our border. But it, I, could, I could still see it being heroin or something, or dust or something. And I didn't want my fingerprints on it either. Well, they said they destroyed the bag because they were afraid it was anthrax so that they could, they could get to it. Now, you walk in there with a the hazmat suit on. You lock the building down. You clear it out. Hazmat, you bring the hazmat van in. I mean, Knox County Sheriff's Department, my guys here, boom, they could do it. Any of my seven or eight partial, uh, eight counties, uh, they, they would know what to do with that. And they would, I guarantee you, they would preserve the evidence. Yet the Secret Service, one of the top investigative protection agencies in the world, not in, not in Washington, not in Virginia, in the freaking world, dude. And they, they destroyed evidence. To get to to decide that it was not an influence. Disappointing. Yeah, this is this administration is a complete disappointment. It's just, just the the more you dig, it's like layers of an onion. The more you get. Okay, one of the biggest hot buttons to me is our border, southern border. Huge. So Tim, I live seventy miles from Canada, and I'm around Border Patrol all the time. And I talk to these guys. They go into the restaurant, and I'll sit down and have lunch with them. Great people, by the way. They are great people. They are what make this country great. Absolutely. Now, what I've learned is that they are on, they were on 30 day rotations, 30 days at home, 30 days at border. 30 days home, 30 days at border. Yep. And they told me, Dave, we've got orders that when these people come across, fingerprint them, photograph them. If they don't get a hit on our fingerprint system or photographic system, they don't get to question them. They don't have to have ID. They're across the border. They're in. Yep. I, I've been to our southern border. Same deal down in um, uh, a little little area. They get over a thousand people a day through there. Cost about sixteen million dollars a month, um, and it's disgusting. Well, Tim, what they told me that really concerns me is that they looked in my eye and they said, "Dave, I guarantee you, there are thousands of terrorists that are in our country." 
100%. That was, I've been briefed on that. And um, what I can tell you is the number of, it, it would be frightening to the American public to know that the number of people on the terrorist watch list that we've caught and the liberals will say, oh, then the system's working. But you and I both know there's a dadgum hole in that thing. They could drive a Mack truck through and that's what they're doing. And the thing they're doing now, they're catching Chinese nationals and they do not know why they're coming. Chinese nationals of army age. And they're not a bunch of, don't let them fool you. Hey, you know, they're running kids in, they're, the cartels are making, uh, uh, let's see, around $30 million a week running humans in. And some of them are in the sex traffic and also in the slave labor kind of camps and stuff and working in fields and stuff. And uh, yeah, and we have sections of the border on our side that are controlled by the cartel. Mm -hmm. This White House will not, now it's documented, it's the truth. Um, I've been there and it is unbelievable. It is, it's, it's beyond anything you can imagine. So when I, when I hear Mayorkas testify, He's a liar. My blood boils. It should. It should. And this, and yet the American public, I just wonder how much we can take. And before we just say enough is enough. You know, 20 million, I always get mad at my people. 20 million so-called evangelical Christians decided to stay home on election day because they're mad about a bad, an ugly tweet. But it, 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 downstream is where it killed us as well. Our school systems, you know, the, uh, during COVID, these people start looking over their little darling shoulders about what the heck was going on in the classroom. I have a degree in education. I'm certified to teach K-12. I get it. My parents were career educators. And uh, the social engineering, the things that are going on, the problems we're going to have, I mean, we could lose a generation because of this thing. And um, and my orcas is, he's horrible. He is horrible. And this, uh, this White House, yeah, I, one of my senator buddies said it best, I think, and I'm going to steal it, basically. He said, you know, this president is listening to a bunch of 25-year-old advisors. They're, they're college-educated, you know, probably Ivy League brainiacs. They're really smart kids. But they got no, they've got no perception of history. They don't know these people, the history of some of these people and the evil that they've done. And they, they buy into just the, what they've done in the last week kind of thing. And they've got his ear, and this is this is part of it. My last question for you. I appreciate your time so much. You pay my salary. Go ahead. And this is a tough one because I think a lot of people, even that think like you and I, hope this isn't true. Tim, is our voting system corrupt? Yes. Not in Tennessee. Secretary of State, we've got is a stand-up guy, but. And, and now it's legal to be corrupt. They, you know, this voter harvesting. I spoke with Trump about it, you know, and just recently. And uh, my friend Byron Donald is out of Florida. Is, is they're putting him on some advisory board. I like Byron. Solid guy. I was with him last night. With him this morning. We're on the baseball team together. Really good guy. Got my hit. He got come off the field and he hugged me. He's a great big guy. <laughs> he's just a big teddy bear, but he's, I love him like a brother. We've been close since he got to D.C. But he, um. But anyway, um, it's a real problem. And voter harvesting, to think that you can go after an election, legally now, legally, and find people that didn't vote, and and there's no verification that you've got them. They could be dead. They could be moved off. They might not even exist. And you get a voter form from them, and they sign it, and you take it back and put it in a drop box, an unlocked drop box. And that can determine who the president of the United States is. So, hell yes, it's corrupt. But I'll tell you what, good folks better learn these new rules because they're going to they're gonna steal. They're, they're going to steal everything we got. And they're Marxists. They want to destroy it. They don't want you to own property. They don't want you to, they want you to be good little comrades. And that scares me. And they're publicly educated. Tim, every one of my viewers greatly appreciate what you're doing. Don't back down. Keep fighting the fight. We greatly appreciate and love what you're doing. Well, if you find out I committed suicide by shooting myself in the back of the head 10 times, you probably pretty much know it's not suicide. Right? I, I expect a documentary posthumously. If your wife will let me on the property, I'll investigate the case. You got it, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you.